Hello guys, this is Brian Mounts and we're in TurfMechanic.com and this YouTube channel. Today I want to talk to you about the very first spring applications that we're going to be putting on the lawn, the first fertilizer that goes on the lawn. Let's talk about what we're not going to be doing, what we could be doing, and why we might want to do it or just wait all together. Now before we get deeper into this video, let's talk about general consensus. General consensus uh, in the very early spring, let's call it late March, uh, whether you're in a warm season climate or a cold season climate running warm season grass or cold season grass, fertilizing really has to do with soil temperatures. Uh, your cold season grass types are going to start greening up when the soil temperature is close to 45 degrees, possibly a little bit lower um, if it never really got particularly cold and you're running, let's say for instance, a perennial rye. Warm season grasses are going to start greening up uh, in the 50 degree range and above. Some of them are not going to really green up till it's about 55 degree soil temperatures. So. When it comes to fertilizing, we can't be putting NPK down before the grass is ready for it. Now, most grass types, and by, I shouldn't say most, grass, um, all grass, as it comes out of winter dormancy, now again, here, here's another caveat. Um, this video is going to apply to grass types that are coming out of winter dormancy. Uh, there are some zones in the U.S., especially down south, that never go dormant at all. So this video doesn't really apply so much to you guys. But for the vast majority of us, with grasses coming out of winter dormancy, we don't put NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, or potassium, down on the lawn. Uh, before the grass has naturally started growing, not just greening up, but growing. So grass types, all grass types, as they come out of winter dormancy, the root systems actually come out of dormancy before the foliar uh, canopy. So when you see your grass slowly starting to change color, you know that the root system it has, uh, at least predominantly started coming out of dormancy or is fully out. And what happens when the root system comes out of dormancy is it starts putting on root growth. The whole point of it is to regenerate. It's, it's to come back to life. It needs to put on root growth so that the, uh, the leaf structure can grow vigorously through the spring and so that the root systems can be fully developed as summer approaches a few months down the road. So when we talk about fertilizing the lawn in the early spring, um, or even at the end of winter for, for those of you in like a southern transition zone area running a cold season grass, we want to push green up but not growth. And we want to push root development, but we don't want to fertilize with phosphorus. Now here in my yard, this is actually a pretty chilly, windy day. It's actually not that cold, but it is windy. It makes it feel cold. But we are slowly starting to see green up. Um, I'll flash some pictures here on the screen. I've taken pictures of my yard over the past couple months. You can tell that the grass is a little bit greener now than it was a few weeks ago and a month ago and certainly back in January. Now, when we talk about fertilizing to push green up, we're talking about adding micronutrients like magnesium and manganese, and then eventually iron. But I like to separate those into multiple applications. The first two micronutrients need to go down along with humic acid. Humic acid is a product that goes down that helps with nutrient uptake and it helps improve the soil structure. So within humic acid is a fulvic acid. Fulvic is what helps uh, nutrients go into the root system of the grass. So if we see or if we know that our soil temperatures are getting up to the low zone or fully in the zone of um, exiting winter dormancy, then we know that those root systems are able to start absorbing nutrients. The humic acid allows those nutrients to go into the root systems a little bit easier. So when we put those micronutrients down with the humic acid, they will go into the grass plant and allow that grass to start producing more chlorophyll. Now at this time of year, the first of March, end of March, we've got roughly 12 hour days, 12 hour nights. Uh, that's what makes it spring. And the days are going to continue to get longer. Basically, there's plenty of sunlight 
to create photosynthesis. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these micros to improve the uh, the plant's production of chlorophyll to to basically improve the photosynthesis process that will help green up the lawn uh, the, the lawn does need nitrogen to green up to do photosynthesis but there is nitrogen already in the plant from last year even if you didn't fertilize the lawn the lawn stopped growing and we kept cutting it and all of those nutrients cycle back into the soil into the plant system it's it's holding on to that stuff so we don't need to add nitrogen Phosphorus is typically thought of as the root development um, nutrient, uh, but we don't need to apply that either because there is phosphorus in the, uh, in the grass tissues already. But what we do want to do is push stimulants into the grass, like biostimulants into the grass that help with root development. Now, having talked about nitrogen and phosphorus and why we don't want to apply those this early in the spring, let's talk about potassium. Potassium although is not going to be like a ground pollutant when uh, when applied in excess uh, or too early in the season it's just going to be a waste and it's also going to create uh, let's call it too much potassium in the lawn uh, at that moment in time because the cra the grass isn't growing the grass doesn't need a lot of potassium and then with that extra potassium in the lawn that actually hinders the uptake uh, of micronutrients uh, like the ones that we're actually interested in putting on the lawn. So I do like to wait for the potassium to later in the season as well. Now, what stimulates root growth that doesn't contain phosphorus? Well, there are root growth stimulants out there. Now there are some, there are some products out there that are just generically called root growth stimulants or RGS. Um, but what are they? Sea kelp. Sea kelp, uh, seaweed, seaweed extracts, uh, what we're actually looking for in all of these products is a hormone, is kind of like this, uh, this plant, uh, this seaweed-based, kelp-based um, substance called a cytokinin. Cytokinins is basically a hormone that when applied to the soil structure and gets down into the root zone of the plant, it actually stimulates uh, the growth and the vigor of the root structure. Now, this hormone is also known to kind of stave off or uh, prevent uh, dormancy from setting foot. So you could apply it late in the fall to extend your growing season a little bit. That hormone just kind of like uh, the plants respond to it by not going into dormancy as early as it would without it. And conversely, it will help that grass wake up from dormancy a little bit earlier. It's just like any other hormone that maybe your body responds to. It's like why a mother starts lactating. The hormones, the hormones. So whether you go for a all-in-one product, and they do exist, a product that contains humic acid with sea kelp, or you do what I'm going to be doing and apply things independently or separately, in addition to me applying straight humic acid and micronutrients uh, here in the very, very end of March, I'm also going to be following it up about a week to 10 days later with straight cytokins. Um, I'm going to be using a product called uh, Cytogrow. Uh, it's a new product to me. Um, I've never used it before, but it is a potent mix of, um, of cytokins coming from uh, seaweed, sea kelp. There's some scientific name for, uh, for it, which I just can't think of off the top of my head. At that same time, I'll also be mixing that together with some chelated uh, liquid iron. Um, we've already pushed the micronutrients, so we've already started boosting the uh, chlorophyll production. Uh, the liquid iron is gonna take that chlorof chlorophyll and the sunlight that we are getting more, uh, more of than we are getting nighttime non-sunlight hours of the day um, and that's going to green the lawn up it's going to boost the photosynthesis process while those cytokines are going to go down into the lawn and uh, under under the soil level and start pushing root development root growth the end result of all of this is that your lawn is going to start greening up faster than anyone on your block but it's not going to be growing so you're not going to be having to mow it um, and you're not pushing extra growth uh, that is unneeded, it's unnecessary. But you're also gonna get a jump start on root development. So throughout, man, the wind is really kicking up here, guys. So 
but you're also going to be getting this like jump start on root development throughout the spring season it's going to be starting earlier for you uh, and uh, more vigorously for you than it is anyone else on your block therefore by the time everyone else is starting to think about preparing their lawns for summer uh, preparing for uh, stress and heat and drought you have already been working on it for a long time in advance of that you're going to have a better summer because of the work that you do in the early parts of the spring now this time of year you might be tempted to go put down a granular product for any of these things but that's actually not the best thing to do all of these products are best put down this time of year in liquid form all of the granular stuff needs to be broken down most of us don't have our sprinkler systems going on um, a lot of this stuff needs microbial life when it comes to granular form products to properly break it down and deliver it down into the root system liquids are much easier to get into the root systems and for some of those products that do absorb uh, through foliar contact the liquids well they stay on the foliar level they stay on the leaf blade so if you're going to go this route you really need to be prepared to do liquid applications otherwise you're just going to have to wait for things to really warm up and start doing at the granular root there's nothing wrong with the granular root uh, it just takes longer now like I said before this plan of attack on the lawn is going to work pretty good for both warm season and cool season grasses or at least those grasses that are coming out of winter dormancy and it's all going to be happening around the same time of year as well because the cold season grasses are up north where the soil temperatures are colder and the warm season grasses are down south and uh, so at the same time of year these products are going to be greening things up now what you're going to want to look for is kind of what you see behind me it kind of looks mostly brown but the thing is you're looking for about a five let's call it a five to fifteen percent green up once that's once uh once your grass is about five to fifteen percent greened up then that means down in the root system uh, most of that grass uh, most of those grass roots have exited dormancy and that's the time that we want to apply these products because they're going into the roots and working their magic if mother nature is telling us that like roughly 10 percent of our grass is ready to be green right now but if we apply these fertilizing techniques to the lawn we can really green everything up pretty quickly and we can really push the health of our, the root system of our grass now this this video is kind of touching on a subject that i want to go deeper into in another topic down the road full-on like root development like tutorial um, i'd like to produce a video down the road completely about pushing deeper root growth so hopefully you'll stick around for that and watch that whenever it comes out but I want to leave you with one last thought this is super important and I've already said it this is reiteration at its finest this time of year almost nobody should be applying nitrogen phosphorus or potassium to the lawn uh, so any time in March really I mean unless you're down and you're down somewhere where your grass never went dormant then it might be an option for everybody else let's push green up let's push root development at the end of March and the first of April somewhere in mid April mid to late April then we can start talking about actual fertilizing for growth um, again that's a controversial topic because some people don't think it should be done at least until may or june uh, we'll approach that in another video down the road thank you so much for watching my hands are pretty cold i'm going to go inside uh, but in the meantime i'm going to wait for the wind to die down and i'm going to apply some of these products to the lawn today